Hey, this is uh, Tom Campbell again from Destiny Unbound Angling. Uh, today, or this next video, we're going to tie a big old saltwater popper. It's a Bob's Banger. Uh, Bob Popovic uh, created this fly. Uh, the only difference I'm going to use is, well, I'll show you the difference when we get to that step, but it's just got one difference. And probably, the, well, the biggest difference is the size. Mine's going to be much bigger than the ones you see in the fly shops. The hook we're using is a um, Owner 5 aught spinnerbait hook. This is one of the things I like about saltwater is you get to tie some really big stuff and get really creative with colors and things like that. But um, if you're wondering where to get this hook, uh, you can get it at Bob Marriott's in Los Angeles. Uh, Bob Marriott's, just Google it. It's a giant fly shop in LA. Um, they've got these hooks. Uh, first thing we're going to do is attach the thread to the right up next to the eye. And we're going to cover the hook all the way. Um, I'm going to just put thread over like, I don't know, almost halfway. And then we're going to just look finished to make this thread stay in place. And I probably should have zoomed in to show you. I'll zoom in and show you what I've done. You can see that I've covered about half of the hook shank with thread. And then I just uh, whip finish. I'm going to clip this off. And then I'm going to have to zoom out again so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to attach the foam head to it. So this is a 5 8 inch diameter foam cylinder. You get the from Wapsi. Uh, they're white and I colored it with a yellow chartreuse prismacolor marker. Uh, the prismacolor markers are really cool because they just come in all these great colors and they're waterproof. So what I'm doing here, let me zoom out, is I'm just going to feed, puncture this through And this is kind of the hard part. You gotta like feed this through the foam. And this foam is pretty hard, so there's some came off. So now the foam is up on the hook. Put the hook back in the tell them such a big hook that vice will hardly stay open for it. But uh now, I'm going to get up to the thread and get my needle out again. Same needle I've been using, and I'm going to put some zapping gap on this thread. So I pre colored the phone. Step that I just kind of got out of the way before we started filming, and I'm pushing the foam all the way up to the head, and you can see there's kind of a you can see the zap gap up here. You can see from this angle. So I'm gonna zoom in and let you show you. I'll be working in a little bit closer now. So it's sitting on, you know, I can't turn it right now. It's sitting on the thread glued 
Um, next thing we're going to do is reattach the thread. And this is not like real delicate work here, guys. It's not a like a size 20 trico emerger or something, you know, it's just it's a big old popper. Okay, I got a bucktail here. Um, what I like on my bucktail, especially chartreuse bucktails, is I want it to be this um, really like nuclear chartreuse, like bass color chartreuse, not green chartreuse, but more yellow. So, I'm going to get the longest bucktail I can find that's straight. I'm going to get a decent amount of it. And what I use this fly for, I forgot to say, was um, uh, for jacks and when I'm going down south. I'm fishing a seawall or a bridge piling for snook. The snook will destroy this. I mean, so will it. A uh, so will a jack too. But um, the strikes you get on this fly are just explosive. I'm gonna have some other stuff mixed into it. So. Um, you know, I think I'm going to get some more. Or I might just get some more all, all together. I mean, the more bucktail and foam you have on this, the more it's going to flow. Drop my head cement. <laughs> okay, so I got a big old wad of bucktail. I'm not even gonna bother to like stack it or anything. Um, 